All right, y'all, let's try this again between my fat-fingered ineptitudinous and Siri thinking it knew what I wanted to do. It, we were having quite the little, oh, contretemps, if you will. So let's, let's do this again, shall we? All right, so we tonight are going to play a little game. It's called Mary Has Only Made This Fun Fold One Time. And she's going to attempt to do it the second time live on Facebook. So what could possibly go wrong with that? Hey, Jean. Hi, Shirley. Hey, Shirley and Karen. I am so sorry. I was having trouble, and every time I messed with my phone, Siri said something intelligent like, I thought so, Mary. You know, really useful things like that. So as I was saying, we, uh, hi, Jerry. <laughs> As I was saying, uh, I have only made this video once, uh, or this uh, card once, this particular fun fold, and I watched a video and made the card, and it worked fine, but I am not terribly, um, well, you know, it's not, it's not something I'm very familiar with. So we're going to see how that works out, shall we? Hey, Karen. Hey, Brooke. How are you? Glad you could join. Stormy Central Florida, eh, Sue? Yeah, you know, when we were just watching the news, uh, looks like Florence is making kind of a, she's fixing to make a showing on the East Coast, so that's kind of worrisome. I hope, uh, I hope she doesn't do what what she, what it's looking like. Hey, Beverly. Hi, Pam. Hi, Fran. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Crystal. Hey, Bobby from Colorado and Karen. Appreciate y'all joining. Um, so let us go ahead and start. This is called a peekaboo card and it's kind of everywhere right now and the stamp set that I used that I appear to have lost somehow is called the toil and trouble stamp set and it's kind of a fun new um, Halloween set I like it what I like in it really is the little kitties and of course this ghost that you can see on the sample card today. I I used him and Highland Heather and Black and Gray. This is the stamp set called Cauldron Bubble, sorry. Toil and Trouble is the DSP that goes with it that brings us this uh, cute little ghost guy. Not very scary at all. Um, hey, Karen, you could very well be, uh, although Florence has not quite pushed in yet. She's still a day or two out. I think they're saying Wednesday. So um, my favorite one, I love this little ghost, but I also love this little kitty. So what I thought we would do is make the same kind of card, but I want to use this really fun kitty um, paper from the Toil and Trouble DSP because I really like it. I'm a cat person and, and I like it. So we're going to play with it and um, we're going to see how it goes. And if it doesn't go well, well, you know, it is what it is, and it won't be the first time that I mess up a card for y'all, but hopefully we'll have a good time regardless, okay? But look at how this card works. It's real fun. When it's closed up, you can see that cute little DSP, but when you open it, into place comes whatever you put there, which in, in most of these cards is some kind of an inside sentiment. So closed and open. Now, this isn't a terribly, terribly difficult fun fold, but um, like I said, I've only done it once, so we're going to see if I, can, if I can repeat it, shall we? All right. So let us go ahead and see what we've got. We've got some pieces of cardstock and a little bit of the new black foil. I didn't really deviate from the, from the decorations much, but we're going to play with a few little things. I've got the pretty pumpkin pie, and it's got a little bit of mango melody, but I stuck with the, the pumpkin pie theme. So here are the card cuts that we're going to need, and these will, like I said, these will be on the uh, blog tomorrow. This is essentially the card base. It consists of two pieces of cardstock. In this case, it's pumpkin pie, and we have four and a quarter by eight and a quarter, and we're gonna score it and fold it here in just a second. And then for the back of the card is another four and a quarter by five and three quarter, and we're going to score and fold at five and a half. The cool thing is, what, even with this odd looking sizes, once you get done, this card fits perfectly in a regular medium size envelope. It's still just an A2 size card, and that's kind of cool. All right, 
So we've got that. And then our inside of our card, in the sample case, I used uh, Smoky Slate. But in this case, <clears throat> we're gonna go a little bit crazy and use a little lemon lime twist. And this is four and a quarter by eight and a half. Now, I'm going to set this aside. We've got some other little pieces and parts. We'll get to those in just a second. I'm gonna pull out my scoreboard, my Simply Scored, and we're gonna do a couple of scoring and folding, score and fold -latings, okay? So I am quite in the tithy tither dither because today I spent the day doing shares, cutting and chopping and winding and packing. Fortunately, Wayne was all over helping me with it, and so that's good, which means I actually did get it done. So the good news is everything should go out tomorrow, and if you've ordered a share, you'll want to be watching probably Wednesday or Thursday by the time it gets across country. But regardless, um, we also had company today from our two young twin, twin brother friends, one of whom is the veterinarian student. He is going into his last, this is like going to be his last year. So he is practically a veterinarian. We just now call him Dr. Chris. So what the heck? He must be Dr. Chris, right? And Finn has been having a problem with his right, his left front foot, and he kind of limps, except for when he doesn't. So he gets up, and then he limps for a little while, and then he kind of walks out of it. But Dr. Chris took a look at him today, and it was, um, well, it was a pretty cool thing to watch, really. He did, he was, I want to say, just like a vet, because he's fixing to be a vet, and it was awesome. It was awesome to see the kid that I remember being 13, who is almost going to be Dr. Chris Martin DVM, and that was cool. So <clears throat> so anyway, that took a little bit of the time today, so I, I'm a little behind. Okay, so our card front. Our first score and fold is along the long side at five and a half inches, I do believe. So we're going to do five and a half inches. All right. And then for the back, we're going to, this is a five and three quarter inch piece. Both are four and a quarter tall. And we're going to score it at five and a half. And what we're doing here, so that you can see the relationship, is you end up, can you see this right here? See this four and a, this is a quarter inch piece and it is adhered to our inner liner to make our card back so that when you look at the card like this, it looks like a regular card front and a card back, but it's got that secret hidden flap, which is actually this piece. Okay, so that's kind of how it's all going together. Hey, Julie. All right, yes, <laughs> it's gonna be fun to learn, Paula. One way or another, you may learn, and this is how not to make one of these cards. Okay, yeah. All right, so now for our inner piece, which in the case of the example is Smoky Slate, but in our card tonight is going to be Lemon Lime Twist, because nothing says Halloween like black pumpkin pie and lemon lime twist. This is a four and a quarter by eight and a half inch piece, and we're going to score it and fold it at four and one quarter, which kind of makes sense, right? Because it's half. All right, so let us set this aside now. And now comes the part where the, the opportunity to mess this up becomes very, very high. Hey, Stacy. All right, so let's go ahead and fold our um, inner liner. I'm just going to start calling this the inner liner now, okay? Because why not? All right? And then we're going to fold our card front and its inner flap, its secret flap, if you will. <clears throat> so it's like this. And then we'll fold our back and give it a nice little burnish right there as well. Probably take the sticky note off because that seems foolish. All right, so before we get started with the fun stuff, let's go ahead and decorate a little bit, shall we? Um, I am going to use my kitty punch and similar to my example, I'm going to make a little bit of tone on tone DSP, if you will. So I'm just gonna take the kitty and make sure that his the black is off of him. And I'm just gonna 
<clears throat> stamp him around on this card front. And yes, he could be upside down. You don't know. There's no reason a cat can't be upside down. If you own a cat or if a cat owns you, you know that upside down is certainly a thing, right? Now I'm going to put this here because I'm picky that way. And there we go, like that. We'll just go around and get him all over the card front. Hey, Trudy. Thank you for joining Virginia. You guys need to be watching out for Flo coming. I'm pretty certain she is uh, going to wreak a little havoc on the East Coast. Oh, and you know what else is going on? I don't know if you guys are horse people, any of you, but the World Equestrian Games is actually taking place, what is today, the 9th? So starting this week, starting on the 11th, the World Equestrian Games, which is, shall we say, this is in all qu air quotes and capitals, a really big deal, is taking place right now in that part of the world. And, of course, it's going to hurricane like crazy. This is a ginormous horse show with all disciplines, driving and hunter jumper and eventing and dressage and gymnastics. I mean, it's it's big time, big time. People come from all over the world, and it is going to hurricane. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Kathy. I hope you still love it after I bork it up. So, <laughs> just saying. Okay, so now I'm taking my two-inch punch, and I'm playing with this just a little bit. I'm going to go this way. We're going to go like that. Maybe I shouldn't get too crazy. So what I'm doing is I'm punching the front of the card, and if you can see, I've just lined up the edge of my punch with the right side of the card base like that, okay? And I've just pushed it all the way in, and I'm gonna punch like so, okay? And then I'm going to take my inner liner, which is the um, Lemon Lime Twist, and I'm going to line the edges up just like that, okay? And I'm gonna take a pencil. Let me make sure it's all lined up. I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna outline that punch I just made. And this is actually one of my Smoky Slate watercolor pencils, okay? And so now I'm going to punch that out with the same exact punch, okay? So what we're doing here is we're creating the windows into the card, right? The windows into the card. So see what we've just done? Like so. Okay? Perfecto. Not a problem. Easy peasy. Nice and squeezy. Okay. Yes, Sue, horses do gymnastics and they wear spandex, usually sparkly, just because they can. Yeah. No. Don't be so silly. Don't place that like. Okay, so now we have cut the card front. We have cut the inner liner piece. And now what we have to do is get everything else lined up so that we put the card together and get our sentiment working like it should, shall we? Let's do that, shall we? All right, so let me put away my ink because I'm going to make a mess. I just know it. It's uh, it's destined to happen. Okay. Hey, Denise. Thank you for joining. So in order to create our card front, let us first go ahead and adhere this into the card. Now, see, this is the part where it's going to start to get dicey, okay? And by dicey, I mean this is where I may screw it up because, you know, I've done it once. And it could very well be that the order of go is one of the more critical pieces of this, right? And because I'm new at it, I may screw it up. So let's see, this is the front, okay. So we're gonna put glue on here. I would recommend liquid glue for this over snail, just because it has a little bit more longevity in the sticky department. And also it'll let you kind of squiggle it around a little bit. Okay, 
So we're just going to line this up like so. Okay. 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 Now, let's go ahead and close it again, and we're going to do one more circle. Now, I was going to try something different. You guys want to are you up for playing with me a little bit? Let's try something different, shall we? Because I wanted to put, I want this here, like so. So, what I am going to do is I'm going to put this together first. And then I'm going to adhere it to that, and then I'm going to trace that circle again, okay? So, this is just a four-inch square piece of the same DSP that I'm using um, for a little bit later, you're going to see it here, and I'm adhering it to a four and an eighth by a four and an eighth inch piece of basic black cardstock. Okay. All right. Now hold your breath, everybody. Now I'm going to just use more liquid glue. Thank you, Ross. I'm going to use a little more liquid glue, and I'm going to put that on the inner liner there, and then we're going to retrace that hole and punch the whole shoot and match out, okay? So let us, yes, we can do that. We can We can probably do that. Let's put that on here. Isn't that such a spooky color combination? Pumpkin pie black and, and the ever scary lemon lime twist. I know Julie is afraid. Don't be afraid, Julie, it's okay. It's just lemon lime twist. It's here to help like the witch side of the paper. I know I do too, but I it's a little too much for me. I like this kitty. I've been wanting to play with the kitty, so I'm gonna do it. Okay, so I'm closing that like so. We're gonna retrace that circle and punch it with the two inch punch, making sure we don't get our the rest of our card in the way. Because we can. You can see, you can see the uh, outline there. Wiggle it over just a little bit to be sure we're in the same spot. Okay. And give it a good pop. There we go. Okay. So now, because I anticipated doing this, because I am sort of smart that way, not always, but sort of, I made myself a little frame out of Lemon Lime Twist, and I will show you how I did that. All I did was in my Lemon Lime Twist card base, I broke my two inch thingy bobber. Hang on a second, let me fix him. Uh, he's gonna be a pill now because I need him to work, so why wouldn't he? Have you guys ever done this where you've popped that out? Now, if I wasn't in the middle of a video, I would run and take this to Wayne to fix. But I'm in the middle of a video, so I'm not going to do that. So off screen where I can get my hands around it. There we go. Okay. So really all I did was I took and punched a two-inch hole in my, in my cardstock like that. And then I took um, one of my scallop circle dies and I cut it like that. Okay, and that created a lemon lime twist frame. See, easy peasy. So I'm going to, not yet, but I will be adhering this to the inside here and we're also gonna do it on the front like so. So it'll all kind of come together. Come together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you guys see that Sir Paul McCartney did a pop-up concert at, um, uh, uh, Grand Central Station. <laughs> How cool would that have been to see? Yeah, baby. Uh-huh, Mr. Paul McCartney. Sir Paul McCartney. So sorry. Yeah, I, I see. I catch you, Sue. But I'm just a little anal like that. Okay. So now, now let's do the part that gets scary. Scary. Actually, the part that's scariest is finding my punched piece that I punched earlier so that I would have it all ready to go 
and not have to search all over. But of course I have lost it. It will be found immediately as soon as, just as soon as, um, wait, maybe that's it. Mm -hmm. Nope, that is not it, it's too little. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to create, uh, what are we gonna create here? Well, oh, let's see, we're gonna put the card, the back on here right quick, okay. So now, in order to make the back of the card, we're going to adhere this flap to, let me check, let me double check where we're gonna really adhere that so that I don't screw it up, okay? Yeah, we're gonna adhere this flap to the back of this liner like so, okay? Because then when it all comes together, it will look like that but it's important that I do it like so, you see. So I'm going to use tear and tape. Highly recommend that you use tear and tape because this is probably gonna get a lot of activity. I'm just gonna put it on the flap like a so. Et voila, easy and peasy. I like easy and peasy. Hi, Marsha, glad you could join. All right. The Halloween witch took it probably and it's right here I know it is although it may not be because I did just have it and it's the wrong size therefore it's entirely possible that I totally cut the wrong size okay now you can see that I have tear and tape adhesive on here and I'm gonna kind of roll it up just a little bit so that it's the same size as my flap like so okay and I'm gonna take the lemon lime twist and I'm going to very carefully hold your mouth just right so that this works out. I'm gonna line up the edge of the lemon lime twist with the fold of the back, like so. All right, and you can see how it looks on the back. Helpful on these first goes if you use very contrasting cardstock so that you can really see what you're doing, she says. And so now, boom, looks like a regular old card. But it has a secret, it has a secret. Okay, now, 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 let us take a piece of what cardstock, not your envelope. Do not cut your envelope, people. I'm just saying it's a better thing to do. Let's take a piece of Whisper White cardstock and we're going to stamp Yon Kitty. Oh, Yon Kitty. We're going to stamp him in pumpkin pie. And I'm gonna stamp him off once. I'm gonna stamp him off twice. I'm actually gonna stamp him off three times, I believe. So once, twice, three times a lady. And then I'm going to take my sentiment, which says trick or treat. Yes, I'm really going away from tradition. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. Not even a little bit. And I'm going to stamp that in black over the top of Yon Kitty. Yon Kitty. And I'm going to make sure I have a good image like so, and we'll just cut, put him over like that. And then I'm gonna take, cause he looks awfully plain, doesn't he? And a little bit, you know, bumdified. So I'm gonna take my Granny Apple Green watercolor pencil. That's in the number two watercolor set, just so you know. And I'm gonna color his eyes an eerie Granny Apple Green. And then I'm going to locate my flirty flamingo watercolor pencil, which is also out here, so there he is. And I'm gonna color the inside of his ear balls, like so, because a, a cat deserves to look good. And then we'll take our basic gray and just kind of touch him up a little bit, just a little bit, so that we know that he's a black cat, but it's not really taking over our our sentiment, right? 
I like the, the softness of the watercolor pencils. You don't have to get them all dark. But if you wanted, you can add just enough, right, to get the darkness. So we're going to know he's a black kitty, but he's going to be a soft black kitty. Soft kitty, warm kitty, little bother. There we go. Okay. We'll get his little back. I'm leaving him a white belly, which you can see if you look at him. All right. Hey, Karen. Appreciate you. Yes, those colors maybe need to have a little purple in. And you could sure do that, Mary, if you wanted a little purple. I considered purple, but I didn't want to screw it up. So I would play with the colors probably off, off base. Okay, so now let's uh, go ahead and close that so I don't repeat that little mistakily. All right, and now I'm going to take my two inch punch again and cut him out. All right, like so. And then we're going to close the flap, okay, because we want the sentiment to be um, on that flap. I'm pretty certain, yes. Okay, and all you gotta do is take your liquid glue and we're going to adhere it right through that hole that was cut in there, like so. We should do it right side up, don't you think? Wouldn't right side up be a better way to do a sentiment than up a side down? There we go, just like that. There he is, Yon Kitty. Oh, Yon Kitty. All right. Now, let's see if I can cut that piece that I that the wild wicked witch of the West took away. We won't cut that piece because that is my envelope of flap. My envelope of flap. Yes, here we go. This one should work if it's large enough. It may not be big enough. It may not. It is not big enough. Hang on, I'll get another little piece. Hang on, hanging on, people. Be hanging on, okay? If you should hang on, that would be good. You should be hanging on. Hanging on, you guys. Okay, so now we're gonna make the initial peekabooly piece, and I am using my two and a quarter inch punch, and I'm simply cutting a piece of my CSP. All right. Trick or treat, upside down <laughs> would work, that is true. All right, so here we go. So this is, if you wanted to say there was a difficult piece, this is, this is the one that you wanna talk about, okay. So here's the back. You can see I messed it up on the first one because that's ink, or uh, not ink, glue. So you can see the DSP is actually adhered to the card back and the side that you want to see is up, okay? And I want to see this side up. So what I do is I'm putting the, I'm just dry fitting it over the hole and what I want is to cheat it a little bit to the left. You know what, I still don't have a big enough piece. I need a bigger piece. So you guys hang on just a second. Hang on just a second. I'm going a little bit bigger yet. See, this is what happens when you aren't fully, fully committed and aware of, the, of what size you need and have never made the card before. So this is what you get, all right? So, Please feel free to murmur amongst yourselves, and I'm going to cut a larger piece with my circle die. And what this is, is um, about two and five eighths, okay? And I'm gonna show you why you want it to be so big. Hang on just a minute. All right. By making it oversized like this, it's gonna make it so that your secret panel can slide easily in and out of the card and you don't risk it getting hung up on your inner workings there. Okay, so here's our two and five eighths piece. 
you close the flap and then you're gonna cheat the circle so that the flap is already under it. Does that make sense? As opposed to if I put it like this and then, or like when I had the smaller circle, if I put it like so, or even the next bigger smallest circle, it has the potential to catch on that edge when it, when it slides, okay? So by doing it with the larger circle and cheating it, so shut your panel. This is the secret panel, right? Shut the panel, lay your circle. Probably good to double check that, you know, the kitties are sitting right side up. That's my preferred way. All right. There we go. And then, okay, watch this carefully because this is where I screwed up the first time. I'm gonna take my liquid glue and I'm going to glue up the back of the circle. Okay. Hold that flap down. And then I'm gonna close the black, the black flap, the back flap over the top. And I'm gonna give that a little rubbly rubbly. She'll be pulling out the pack and using an entire sheet. Hey! That's right, I, you know what? There are actually, in fact, uh, eight dimensionals on this card. I managed to get eight in and I only used them on a one inch wide strip. So, you know, I'm pretty good that way. All right, so now what we have, are you ready? This is amazing and I hope you are watching. Ready? DSP, <gasps> trick or treat. See it again, DSP, <gasps> trick or treat. So that is the basic peekaboo card. Easy peasy. You now completely understand the mechanics behind this oh so amazing card. And then all you gotta do now is decorate. So let's do some decorationing, shall we? Now, but I gotta get a drink, you guys, I'm sorry. Yes, et voila, and thank you, Paula, for the clap, clap, clap. Okay, I had to get a drink. Alrighty, now let's do a little decorating, shall we? The decorating, it's like you've got the cake made. So now let's make it pretty. We're gonna frost it. So I just have a strip of my DSP and I have a slightly larger strip of black foil and I'm going to glue them together. And wait for it, because the dimensionals are coming, I'm just saying. The dimensionals are definitely coming. Now you could, if you wanted, you could certainly put a different DSP facing up, certainly up to you. I kind of like this uh, sort of monochromatic. You can see that my, um, these are both four and a quarter inches long, so they're the exact size of my card. All right, now this is going to go box it exactly like that right there and we are going to put a frame around here and I'm going to show you another little kind of frame I made okay are you ready are you ready are you ready okay hang on okay so piece of black foil and I am going to use my two inch punch again and I'm going to cut out a hole make sure you leave enough space around it to make another cut Okay, and then I'm going to take my Starburst Punch. I will, I'm gonna ruin it, Julie. I'm putting some lemon lime twists on there. You can't stop me. I'm taking my Starburst Punch, which is just ever so slightly larger than that two inch punch, and I'm punching out a little tiny shiny frame, okay? And I'm actually gonna do that twice because I want one on the inside. Just save those little pieces and you can probably cut bats or you could probably cut one of the little black kitties out. I'm thinking he would be right because there's a black kitty die in the um, in the matching die set. Okay, so I have two little black foil frames and I'm going to go ahead and adhere those on now. Just don't look, Julie, just don't look. If you can't stand it, just don't look. 
And Julie, you could use um, Granny Apple Green because here's true confessions time. I meant to use Granny Apple Green and I cut everything out with Lemon Lime Twist. And at the time, I my blood sugar was zero because we hadn't eaten dinner yet. And it was one hour and I had to go feed. And I said, you know what? Lemon Lime Twist works just fine with this cardstock or with this DSP. And so that is what I'm going to use. And that's why it's Lemon Lime Twist. But it could just as easily, it was simply the quirk of me. Well, I'm going to just say because I was hungry. Let's just use I was hungry. Okay, so I'm just using a little bit of glue on the back of my starburst punched frame here. And he's a little persnickety because he's kind of little, but he's cute when you get him on there. So it's worth it's worth it to me. I think it's worth it. Okay. And just line him up with the inside of the swickle. The inside of the circle. It's the circle of life. Wait, that's the wrong song. Entirely the wrong song. We'll get that pushed in. It's a very flexible frame because it has zero substance to it. So you can wiggle it around while that glue is still wet. Now here's a little tip, y'all. If you hated the fact that you can kind of see a little lemon lime twist there, you could in fact take your Stampin' Write marker and just kind of help that tone down. But it's not bothering me now. I, I can tell, I can hear Julie grinding her teeth. Let's go ahead and just do that on the inside right now. So far I have not messed it up. That's exactly right. I, there's still time though, Roz. There's still time. Give me a second. Um, it's almost Monday somewhere. Have you guys noticed that it's really getting dark early? That was a complete aside, but it just struck me when I said it's almost Monday. All right. Now we'll put that on in here, and we're just going to repeat this gold foil. No, this is not gold. This is black, Mary. Hello, this is black foil. We're going to repeat the black foil punch. Now, I just want to show you something here. On the, the uh, sample one... I didn't think about doing my DSP until too late, so I did some more tracing, and I actually adhered the base, the uh, mat first, the basic black mat, and then I traced on my DSP the circle, and then I cut the DSP with the starburst. So when I adhered it to the mat, it created that starburst outline, but it's not black shiny foil, so, so this will be fun too. Okay, okay, just saying. You know, full transparency and all that. And all that rigmarole. And all that fall to roll and yada, yada, yada. All right. Get a little glue on there. Now, I suppose if you were a thinker ahead or better than I am, you could, I could have put some um, adhesive sheets on the back of my foil and that would have made a little bit easier than that semi persnickety gluing but what's the fun in that let's do it the hard way I like that I prefer to do things the hard way whenever possible but you can see that little black foil just makes it pop I'm sorry but I like it I like lemon lime twists and I cannot lie okay there we go okay <laughs> you're so cute you're so cute, little kitty. You're just such a cute little kitty. Yes, you are. Okay. Now, let me see if I can find my spiders. Are these guys cute? Look. Look how cute these are. Can you see them? I mean, you know, a real spider maybe isn't so cute, although some of them are. But look how cute he is. Oh, oh, yes, I love him. Okay, now, also in my mess, one of my favorite ribbons, although this one... <laughs> <laughs> Wayne did not have a good time wrapping this today because it's got a little bit of wire in the edge, which for a bow challenged person like myself makes it very nice to work with. But for my husband, it was really hard for him to wrap. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of this and I'm going to wrap it around my um, DSP panel there like that. 
You know what? I caught him cutting paper with my ribbon scissors today. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I had to say, oh, no, sir. No, no, sir. No, sir. Do not do that again, sir. I know. This ribbon is amazing. I love it. It's beautiful and it's shiny. Now, a little mm, full disclosure, the little flakes kind of go wherever they want to, but isn't that really kind of half the fun of glittery, gl glittery stuff? Okay. So I'm just using a glue dot and I'm sticking it around on the back. And then I'm gonna get another glue dot to stick the other end. So just a, a card making tip, if you have two ends of your ribbon, you're gonna to wanna to adhere both ends, just saying. Yeah, you may not hear that on other videos, but I like to tell you how to do things the right way. So you're gonna to wanna to adhere that like so. Okay, you ready? It's time for dimensionals. It's dimensional time, people. And I'll use mini ones just to make everybody happier. And I'm going to use one in the corner, one in the corner, one in the corner. Oh, I'm sorry. I only got up to six, not eight. But I think it'll be plenty. And then I'm going to pop that on my card front like this. All right. All right. Yes, Jean, I'm sorry. It's only six. <laughs> That's right. If I used... <laughs> True. True. You could really use 27 and still be right. But I'm going to just use six because I, I, <laughs> I know that the dimensional police are watching. Okay. So I'm just going to line up the top and the bottom with the top and the bottom like so. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to show you a trick. First off, I'm going to tie myself a little bow with this pretty ribbon, like so. I am not a very good tie a bow while it's on the card person. I don't do it well. My bows never turn out good. So I'm very much, if you see a bow on my card, you can almost rest assured that it is glued on in some form or fashion. It was created separately and glued on. But what happens, let me show you what happens. If you glue it like that, it really kind of looks fake, doesn't it? Because why, if you really tied that, then this ribbon would go in and it would look like that. So let me show you how to do that. On this particular card, I'm gonna use just a little bit of silver metallic thread, like this. And about where I want to put my bow, be watching closely, it's hard to see this thread, I'm pretty certain. I'm just going to take a piece of that um, silver metallic thread, and I'm going to watch, it's gonna be like the miracle of miracles. I'm gonna tie it just like that. And I'm going to do a double knot. And because I have it out and handy, if you if I have it out and handy, wait a minute, wait a minute, my big fat fingers are not cooperating at all. Come here. Okay. I'm going to take my little silver spider trinket. Yes, don't tell anybody. Here we go. And I'm just going to string this spider trinket onto that silver thread like that and give it one more tie maybe two because that would be a knot not a knot but a knot if you know what I mean I'm just gonna do a knot two overhand ties two overhand ties makes a knot okay so there we go and then I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut that off now when I take a glue dot and add my bow, it's going to look much more realistic because the background uh, ribbon comes in as if I had tied it. But before I do that, let us make a quick sentimente, shall we? A sentimente, if you will. And I believe we'll do something completely crazy. And let's use trick or treat Halloween but where is it? Here it is. Okay. We're going to use Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. -y. Happy Halloween. -y. Okay. 
Now, what do you guys think? Should I use purple? I had a suggestion that purple would be good on this card. What do you think? Mm, no, I'm going to go Lemon Lime Twist because I'm, I'm crazy that way. Here we go. Oh, ah, thank you. I sense some sarcasm, Amy. I do. I do. Okay. So this is the Happy Halloween. I'm just going to make sure I've got a nice... Yeah. You know what? That's not very good. I don't like that. Don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I. But I'm going to use it. No, nope, I think... Nope, I'm going to use pumpkin pie. I'm going to use pumpkin pie gonna use pumpkin pie mostly because I think it will um, pop a little better than the green that's just what I think and I may be completely wrong and I may have to start I may have to make two sometimes I do that I'll make two sentiments or two elements and see which one is happier for me actually I think that's gonna be pretty good I like it I like it I like it. I love it. You think, do you think I should use purple, Marianne? Black purple. Hey, I have an idea. I'm going to do one in purple. I'll do Highland Heather because that is, um, no, let's use Gorgeous Grape. Let's try Gorgeous Grape, you guys. This will be fun. It'll be kind of like an interactive card making. Now, it would have been better if I had uh, wet my chamois before we started, but I didn't, so I'm just wiping it off. Black embossed would look cool. That is true. That is true. Oh yes, I think the purple could get it. Let's see how that looks. But that's gonna be, that's gonna be wet. Have you guys noticed that the darker pigments don't dry as quickly, or is that just me? Oh, lemon lime twist. Wipe it on my pants. I already did. I don't want you to know. Don't judge. Why do they say it's water soluble, but it doesn't come out in the wash? Just asking. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that's dry yet. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, let's cut us a strip here to make us a sentimente. And then I'm going to take some scissors, actual, you know, paper scissors, and we're going to cut us a little banner. Let's see how big I need. We're going to go like so, right like that. It's a little bit crookedy, but you know, it's okay. It's okay. Just snip me a banner that. Do another little quick dry fit. And the bow will come like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to snip it right about uh, there. And then I'm going to take my pumpkin pie marker and edge it like so. Because I can. Just like that. And when I remember to do it, I do like to edge my banners because I think it makes it um, have a little definition. That's my story, and I am sticking to it. You cannot tell me it is not true because I believe it is. Oh, I do believe it is. Ah, oh, look, another, exam another opportunity to use a dimensional. And I'm going to show you where I'm going to put it here in about two seconds. So I'm going to use a little liquid glue there. Yeah. I don't cut straight so good. Putting a little liquid glue under the left end of the sentiment, and then I'm gonna just stick it under the bow and get it sort of straight looking like that. And then I'm going to take my tweezers and grab up, thank God I can use another dimensional. I was worried. I'm gonna grab up a, another mini dimensional, take off its little lid and with my tweezers, stick it right there, like a seal. Oh, did not want to go. The dimensionals gods are saying, no, 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 you don't need more dimensionals, Mary. Don't be so silly. Let's stick that, let's push that up just a little bit like that. Okay. 
All right, now, put the lid on. Of course, another dimensional. Thank you. Ah, ha, ha, ha. The card is not ruined just because of a little lemon lime twist. You, Hey, look, lemon lime twist, haters gonna hate. Haters gonna hate. The rest of us are going to have some moments of silence when lemon lime twist goes away next summer. But thank God we have Granny Apple Green. Are you guys loving Granny Apple Green? I love it. I love Granny Apple Green. Okay, so I'm just putting a glue dot, because a dimensional would not be appropriate. Putting a glue dot on the back of my bow, and I'm sticking it on at a jaunty angle, and then I'm giving those little wiry loops. Love wired ribbon, people, I love it. I'm getting that glue dot off of my tweezers. I love wired ribbon so much. Wired ribbon is the answer for bow challenged people, I'm just saying. Then we'll give that a trim, like so. Now, have I forgotten anything? Let's see, sentiment on the front, card that opens wide. Yes, I think we've got it. Oh yes, let's do us a quick envelope. Just because your card is awesome does not relieve you of the need to keep your envelopes from being naked. All right, I'm gonna do some kitties. I'm going to give those <laughs> kitties on the front of my card envelope. Just a couple. We are Siamese, if you please. I think I should color them. I think they need at least green eyes, at least green eyes. Let's do a little coloring. I mean, I've got the pencils right here. Oh, it's a little late. I'm sorry, you guys. If you guys need to pop off because it's nine o'clock, you're welcome to, but I am giving these little, little guys green eyes. I am. They need green eyes. Not green eggs, that would be weird. But they do need green eyes and they need flirty flamingo ear balls like that and then I think I'm going to leave them like so let me look at the inside of my card and see do I really want it to go Do I want to give him some more color uh, yeah I do so you guys can pop off if you need to I will understand completely it is late in some parts of the world so I'm just doing a quick little, oh wait, flirty flamingo nose. Flirty flamingo nose. Okay. And a little basic gray. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Jean. I'm glad you got home and were able to watch. I'm glad you got off the road before Florence hits the East Coast. That's for certain sure. And I'm leaving him a little white bib, which you can see easier. And I'll give him a little more color on his little rump so you can see he's a little shaded. All right. I'll just color these little guys like so. All right. Now I'm gonna just be straight up. My blog post tomorrow is gonna to be pretty general. You'll probably see a picture of each of these cards. And then um, anybody who wants to see how to make the card is gonna to have to watch the video. Sorry, that's just the way it is tomorrow. And Amy, yes, I will get my link up for the blog hop on Tuesday as soon as we sign off here. Are these not the cutest little cat? You guys know we are Siamese, if you please. Pretty sure that was from Lady and the Tramp. Pretty sure. We are Siamese, if you please. And then we'll put a little bit of the pretty DSP on here. I would enjoy a whole weekend doing You know what, Rosie? That would be so cool. We should do that. We're, one of these days, one of these days, we're all gonna get together and we are gonna do some card making, I think. That would be fun. I don't know how to make that happen exactly since I don't like own an airline or a large airplane, but I think that would be awesome fun. 
and I'm glad you had fun. And mostly because that's just the kind of person I am. I'm really glad I didn't screw up this card. <laughs> I'm really glad. I was a little worried about it, I have to say. I'm not one of those people, I'll say that I don't mind if I screw up in front of y'all, but in truth, I kind of mind if I screw up in front of y'all. So, I'm glad I didn't. All right, here we go, and a quick fussy cut, and we have one peekaboo card. Now, I almost didn't even do this because we're doing Halloween on Tuesday, and now I don't even know what to do, but I think I'm going to do a double easel card on Tuesday. What do y'all think? Do you like double easel cards? I love double easel cards, actually. I would do another one of these, but it seems too soon. It's like too soon, right? Where's my rubbers? Where are you, rubber eraser? Come here. There you go. Best invention ever. All right. And there we go, people. Two different kinds of peekaboo card. One in Siamese orange and lemon lime twist in black, but still with the fun peekaboo sentiment. Okay, I kind of love this fun fold, not gonna lie. And then we have it in Highland Heather and Smoky Slate with the cute little ghosts. Same idea, same sentiments. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? All right, you guys. Thank you so, I know, right, Roz? Why would they discontinue something so useful? Thank goodness Michael still carries it. All right, guys, y'all have a great week. I will see you next Sunday, and uh, thank you for spending party weekend with me. We'll see ya. Bye.